Uh, let's go to Victoria now. The opposition leader, John Pesciuto, is standing by for us. John, thanks so much for your time. We heard uh, what Jane had to Pleasure say more. there about the energy system. I mean, this has really exposed the problems in the mix at the moment, hasn't it? What's your solution? Well, to invest in network resilience and take a very measured and orderly approach to making sure our grid can work even with severe uh, storm weather. Uh, the government uh, commissioned a report following uh, some severe storms in 2021, Laura, and it received mm. the report two years ago. It reported a year after that, and it's been a nearly, uh, you know, a six months since the government responded, but it's doing nothing to invest in network resilience. It's had nearly three years to respond to this. Yeah. Everybody knows that particularly at this time of year, we face severe storm weather and our grid needs to be resilient enough to meet that. So the first Can thing I is just the government down needs on that to actually a start bit, doing something. John, network resilience is a neat term, but I don't know exactly know what you mean by that. What are you talking about practically? So it means, one, Laura, that the uh, energy infrastructure, towers and the like, are more resilient, secondly, yeah. to, to, to storm weather, and secondly, it means that we've got options. And I think you touched on this in your interview with Jane just a moment ago, but just let's all remember that yesterday, gas was supplying about 25 to 30% of the state's energy needs. And I can say from my own experience in our own household, we were... We were cut off from electricity as well, like so many others in Victoria, and we had to use gas. And the government has this ideological opposition to gas, which is going to see more and more Victorian households and businesses exposed to this kind of outage experience. And it's not fair yeah. on them, and the government needs to get serious about it. Are you on board with this nuclear idea from your counterparts in the, in the federal parliament? <clears throat> I've said previously, Laura, that we're open to it. I think there's a few things we need to bear in mind. I think for long-term investments like nuclear will require, I do think it requires bipartisan support. We're certainly open to it and we certainly understand and believe that in the decades ahead, let's be reasonable, let's, let's adopt a common sense approach. We're going to need a diverse range of renewable sources of energy and energy sources that can be deployed when other sources are out of action, whether yeah. it's due to storm events or the like. So but obviously this has exposed the unreliability of coal, would you agree? Well, let's, let's also understand that the Victorian government has agreed to underwrite the existing coal fleet in Victoria yep. up to certain periods. They differ from coal fire power station to the other. But during that time where the government has underwritten them, it's got to make sure that it can deliver what Victorians are paying for. We're paying for these mm. coal-fired power stations to deliver reliable energy. So what Jacinta Allen and the government need to do, Laura, is make sure that we're getting, getting the energy in a reliable way because we're paying for it. Yeah, it's pretty wild that in 2024, even it was a, it was a decent storm. Absolutely, it was um, you know concentrated in a region, and those, we've all seen the pictures of those transmission uh, towers bent out of shape. But it's pretty wild that in 2024, that AEMO is asking businesses to basically stop trading, stop manufacturing, and they don't have a timeline on when when they can resume that because the state doesn't have enough power. You bet it is, Laura. It's it's not fair and it's not appropriate. It's all avoidable. And let's remember, it's not just about the businesses and the employees who will suffer. You know, what experiences like last night remind mm. us is that, you know, all of us would have been thinking last night, if this outage goes on and on, we're going to have to dispose of all of the food in our fridge. Mm -hmm. And think about, uh, we're OK as a family, but think about all those families who are struggling um, to make ends meet having to dispose of food and perishables, medicines that need to be refrigerated. This is very personal for people. And governments have a responsibility to make sure that they deliver without failure on the basic necessities we all need. Yeah, and that has not been d delivered, uh, at least in the last 24 hours, a little bit less. Right. Just finally, what uh, have you asked the question about when power would be restored? I mean, our best advice is, you know, some areas it could be two days, but other areas up to a couple of weeks. Yeah, and that's going to be very hard on those families and communities that are affected. It's not acceptable. And all of this stuff, as I said earlier, Laura, because of reviews that have been undertaken in the last couple of years into this very issue, the government hasn't responded. So it's not fair on those people who have to wait. Uh, but we'll seek briefings from relevant agencies okay. today. We obviously see as a first priority to make sure 
given fires are, uh, are undergoing at the moment and also the outages. We want to make sure that that priority is met first, but we'll be seeking briefings on all of those other matters. OK, John Bushido, please keep us posted. We'll speak soon. Thanks, Laura.